Alright, so the question that we're going to do today, like I mentioned to you, is this question, right? So today is 10 July 2018, 3 p.m. Tuesday, right? So now, this is the question, yes. Today, we will be doing a question involving cookies, right? Cookies, who have not eaten cookies? All of us have eaten cookies, right? So for me, I, I think everybody loves cookies, right? There are different kinds of cookies. These are chocolate chip cookies, right? So in today's most difficult question is about cookies, right? So let's take a look at the question. Okay, it's uh, it's okay, right? So basically, mother bought some packets of cookies. She gave some of the cookies to Pei Hui, Tevum, and Ali. At first, two fifth of the cookies were given to Ali, and Pei Hui had twenty five percent more cookies than Tevum. Mother then decided to give the remaining cookies she had bought to each of them equally. They were given 15 cookies each. Now, the ratio of cookies of Pei Hui to Ali is 8 is to 9. How many packets of cookies did mother buy if each packet had 20 cookies? Now, first things first. Like I mentioned just now, this question, it may not come out for your PSLE, but parts of it will come out and the topics or the concept tested or the problem sum strategies that are involved in this question may be tested or may be used in the PSLA exam so for those who are taking foundation math you would not have learned about ratio but if you know a little bit of ratio you can still join us okay so as you can see here what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make use of Dr. Zam math method, right? We're going to use the GWS method with Dr. Zam's keys checklist, right? So typically when you have a problem sum like that, uh, our method is not for your children to memorize steps or to memorize workings, but rather we want them to have a mental routine or a mental habit, right? something that they can keep on doing and uh, again and again so what we have here later on i will introduce to you this okay this is called the problem sum toolkit right this problem sum toolkit or problem sum toolbox contains all the different problem sum strategies which your children can learn and then later can apply to all sorts of questions right okay now first things first let me introduce to you when you have a question like this some students don't even understand, right? They don't quite understand what it's talking about, things like that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you, number one, what are the Dr. Zam's golden rules. Number two, I'm going to show you the GWS method. GWS, you can think about it in terms of get well soon. The third one uh, that I'm going to show you is the Dr. Zam's KISS checklist. So this KISS checklist enables your child to develop a mental math routine so when your child follows this routine each time your child encounters any problem or math problem your child can solve the problem right so these are the golden rules all right so just now when i read the question i didn't really go through with you the golden rules so all right Okay, let me just grab my pen. Okay, now, the first thing you need to do is read carefully, right? Don't just read without comprehending. Okay, take time to read carefully. Understand clearly. So it's very important not to just understand, but you have to understand clearly. That means you must really understand clearly, right? Then the next thing you need to do, right, as you read, look out for the givens. Okay, givens here are information, relating to the problem that is given to you now here's the thing the more givens the easier is for you to solve the problem because when you have so many givens it's easier for you to play around with the givens and solve right then the next thing you need to find out is solution right so you need to find out what is the solution that is needed in the question and then as you are reading you will annotate annotate is what i'm doing here right i'm actually circling scribbling stuff as I read so that's annotate and then you visualize or draw okay you see sometimes when you want to understand clearly you cannot just read but you have to visualize that means as you read the words the words have to be very 
uh, pictorial in your head. You have to visibly think about the words that you're reading. Right? For some students, they can even draw. If you want to draw, you can actually draw to understand further. Right? So we're going to do all this later. All right. So what we need to do here is, okay, I'm going to show you the Dr. Zamsky's checklist. But before that, I just want to let you all know what is GWS. GWS basically means this method, okay, GWS. You start with givens, right, and you are given the solution. So you have to work out or rather come out with the workings. So the missing part here is the working. So your given solution. So to connect your givens to the solution, you need to work out or you need to have your workings. All right, so that's why here, uh, Dr. Zam Golden Rules, you start with looking out for the givens, the solution, right? So now let's take a look at Dr. Zam's keys checklist. So Dr. Zam's keys checklist is something that you would want your kids to make it into a habit, right? So if we take a look at Dr. Zam's keys checklist, we have the exam smart component. Okay, imagine that this question is actually being tested in the exam, right? So your child cannot only do the question as if your child has two hours just on one question or 10 minutes on one question, but your child have to do this question in relation to the fact that it's an examination. So your child needs to have the exam smart skill. So the very first step is your child always need to check time and manage time, right? So if your child starts this uh, question first, then your child needs to know. You know, how many marks is this question and how long your child has. So it's very important for your child to have a watch. Alright, because when you do problem solving, it's not just a matter of being able to solve the problem, but you need to be able to solve the problem with the time given to you. Right? So the very first step is to train your child to be very good in the speed, okay, in the speed of solving problem, in the speed of giving answers, and then at the same time, your child needs to manage the time. Right? So the next stage is your child need to understand and analyze what the problem is. So how do your child do that? How does your child do that? The first thing is to read, right? Which I've already mentioned here. They need to read carefully and understand clearly. And then your child will need to annotate and analyze. So let's do that, right? Let's do this part first. So mother, okay, mother is one of the character in this problem. She bought some packets of cookies so basically your mother or anyone's mother actually bought packets of cookies like this right how many packets you're not sure right you're not sure yet the first sentence basically talks about cookies so it's always very good to visualize so when when your child is doing problems some visualize you know when you have mother probably your child can visualize that the mother your child's own mother like for example my case when I have the word mother I'll think about my mother probably and then I will then uh, play a movie in my head, right? That my mother bought some packets of cookies. So, for example, she might be going to the NTUC Fair Price, or she could go to Giant, and then she actually bought packets of cookies, right? So that's how you do to understand. You visualize, right? So she, right? So you're still referring to the mother, okay? What did she do? She gave some, right? So the word here is some of the cookies that she bought to who? To Pei Hui, one person, Tevam, second person, Ali, third person. So basically, she only gave some okay, of the cookies she bought. So she bought some packet of cookies, but she gave some of the cookies, not all of the cookies to three of them. So at first, she gave some of the cookies to three individuals, Pei Hui, Tevam, and Ali. All right. Then the next sentence is at first. Okay, at first. So when you look at the word here, first, at first, that means they are trying to tell you a certain process is happening, right? So it's very important for your child to understand this, right? Because there are certain words or keywords in the problem sum that are trigger words to let your under to let your child know or to rather let you know what problem sum strategies to employ, right? So at first. Two fifth, two over five of the cookies, right? So these cookies here that you're talking about is the cookies that mother gave to three of these individuals, okay? So they're talking about two fifth of the cookies which were given to the three kids, right? So two fifth of the cookies were given to Ali. So Ali actually had two fifth out of all the cookies that mommy gave to three of the kids. 
Alright And then what happened? Pei Hui Had 25% more Cookies Than Tevam Right, so Pei Hui is the one that had twenty five percent more cookies than Tebum, right? So this is a comparison between Pei Hui and Tebum, right? So this two fifth is of the cookies that were given to all of them, all right? Then what happened next, all right? So this is the process. So at first, this is what happened. Now next, mother decided to give the remaining cookies, remaining from where? Okay, remaining cookies that she had bought. Okay, to each of them equally So each of them here means the three kids Okay So mother decided to give the rest That means at first she had some She divided it amongst three of them In accordance to, the, to what I mentioned just now Then whatever that remains after the first process She divided them equally to all three of them Right So what did she do next? Okay, they were given 15 cookies each Okay, so what happened here is Later on, the remainder Alright, mummy gave 15 cookies to each of them So from here, later you will see that Straight away down here, you know what is the amount of cookies That was actually remaining, right, from here Because this is called the derived given Derived given means it is not direct The given is not directly uh, there for you You just have to do Simple calculation So like for example In this case You can easily just take 3 times 15 Right So that means The remaining From what mommy Had already given To 3 of them There were 45 cookies 3 times 15 Right So that's called The derived given But it's okay We'll talk more about that Later on Alright So what happened next Right So when mommy did this What happened The ratio Okay The ratio now Of cookies Between Pei Hui Okay, Pei Hui is to Ali Is now 8 is to 9 So that means now After mommy has given up all the cookies And giving each student Or each individual 8 uh, 15 cookies each Now the ratio is 8 8 is to 9 Right between Pei Hui and Ali Okay Now the next sentence Or the last sentence is actually the question So how many packets See the question here is How many packets Right? How many packets of cookies did mother buy if each packet had 20 cookies? Alright, so this is what is being meant by reading carefully and understand clearly, right? So the thing that you do here is you read, you annotate, and you analyze. Analyze means you try to take your time to see how the whole thing fit. Right? So in this case, if you notice, you're talking about packets of cookies that mommy buy, but when it comes to giving cookies Right Like for example here If you look at here Let me just uh, grab a highlighter uh, Let me just change the colour Right So down here is cookies Right It's about cookies That means What mommy did was Mommy took out all the cookies from the packets And then distributed them Right but the question here is asking you how many packets of cookie. So this is something for you to think about. All right. So. All right. Okay. So just now, let's go back to Doctor Zamki's checklist. We read, we annotated and analyzed, right? And then we visualize to understand, right? That means we try to visualize that mother actually bought the cookies. You know, you visualize. All right. For those students. Who, you know you want to help them further and you have lots of cookies you can actually use real cookies to help your child solve the problem right to get them used to processing this information in their head you can get real cookies for them to actually do it or you can use pictures or cutouts or you know like for example they can just draw right so that your child can understand the concepts better can understand the problem better right so the next step here is to draw to understand Right? So for example If your children need to start drawing And here when we talk about draw It doesn't mean Right away Your child need to draw a model Or draw a table Or draw a diagram Basically draw here means just draw Right Because Rather than your child Has all the information and thinking His thoughts are in his brain It's better for him to Spill it out On a piece of paper Okay Just draw something So that your child can connect 
this abstract form of question, abstract form of question, which is in a problem sum, your child can actually convert it into something more pictorial and concrete. This is how to help your child do better, right? Okay. The next step is to know which concepts, right? So the next step is to know which concepts are tested. So let me just change the color of the pen here so that uh, we all can uh, see clearly here. Let me just use green. Okay, so what are the evidence here to show you which concept? Firstly, okay, we know it involves fractions, all right? It involves percentage, okay? And then of course it involves whole numbers and then it involves ratio, right? So these are the concepts tested. Now, which skills are being tested here? Skills here, if you actually go through uh, the Dr. Zam math framework, you will understand that the skills here we are talking about will be things like, for example, numeric calculations, algebraic manipulation, uh, and so on, right? So these are all the different skills your child have to take note. So for in this particular case, your child need to be very comfortable with numerical calculation, right? Your child need to be able to add, to minus, to plus, to minus, uh, to multiply and divide, right? And then the next thing is your child needs to know which heuristics, which heuristics are involved here, right? So just now like I mentioned to you, when your child joins Dr. Zam's uh, math, your child will actually receive Dr. Zam's problem sums toolbox okay so the toolbox it contains all the heuristics all the non-routine methods right so for example uh, we have everything inside this toolbox so for example uh, some of the uh, let me just show you okay some of the the heuristics that we have okay will be for example soft part of the problem right so your child will learn soft part of the problem which are different kind of heuristics simplify the problem Okay, restate the problem, work backwards, before and after. So what happens here is when your child actually has a, a problem sum toolbox, your child will equip itself with all the different problem sum strategies, all the different heuristics and all the non-routine methods. So heuristics here means problem solving tools, right? So your child will learn uh, how to represent the problem, how to simplify the problem, how to go through a process uh, and things like that, right? And uh, and uh, and all other different problem sum strategies and then the next thing is your child will need to ask itself is it a non-routine method that can be used right so in dr zam's uh, math problem sum toolbox we actually equip your children with all the different heuristics with all the different non-routine methods so when your child analyzes a problem sum your child will then recall and remember you know what are the trigger words what are the keywords and then from there your child can apply so if you notice at the beginning when you are first introduced to dr zanki's checklist you might be taking some time to understand the process but once you keep on doing it you keep on repeating it and make it a habit each time you have a problem it becomes fast and then when your child keeps on doing it again and again and again your child will be able to follow the keys checklist inside its head right so for your information keys here means keep it systematic and score right so let me just finish this up because this part here is still understanding, right? Understanding, analyzing. So the next part here, okay, the next part here is to plan, okay? To plan and write and draw, right? So what you plan, how do you plan? Okay, so for you to plan, you ask yourself what are the givens and what are the solution, all right? What are the givens and what are the solutions? So later, I will go through this in the next stage because right now, it's just understanding and analyzing. So this stage when you have the problem sum, this is how you understand and analyze, right? For example, this problem sum, like I mentioned to you, is the hardest PSLE math problem sum. So of course, the amount of uh, understanding analysis is quite significant. You know, it's uh, very thorough because there are many parts to this question. And like I mentioned to you, this question will never appear in the PSLE exam. This question will be about 8 to 10 marks. So that's why, but the components of this question, the way for your child to come up with a solution, you can actually apply for other questions, right? So in the planning, your child will be able to look out for what are the givens, uh, what is the solution. And then the next thing is your child will then start planning steps and working to the final answer. All right. So uh, the next part of the Dr. Zanki's checklist is do. Right. So after your child understand, analyze, plan, write and draw, the next thing is your child start doing it, start solving it. 
So the first thing is your child can use a diagram, model or a list, right? Whatever diagram, whatever model your child wants to use, your child starts using it. Okay, your child can do that. And then the next thing is to start or draw the workings and steps to get the answer. And then have to work out the steps. So work out the steps here, normally they use a calculator. So for paper two, this question is normally in paper two, but like I mentioned to you, this question is so hard that it will not appear in the PSA because there are too many steps, right? So your child need to work out the steps and most of the time, please, if it's paper two, don't waste your time. Just use calculator, all right? Just use calculator, don't waste time because time is very important, it's very precious. So you should use the time to use uh, for problem solving to think about all the different ways to solve the problem rather than do mental sums right so for paper two, use your calculator okay to work out even though some of the numbers are very tiny you know you can easily do mental sum but it's always good to use calculator so that you don't make careless mistakes all right then as you are doing this you come up with the final answer right so that's when you get the final answer so when you get the final answer that's not it all right so part of dr zanki's checklist of the math mental routine is the next stage which is check and review so your child need to check and review so if your child is stuck okay then your child can ask a question do i decide to skip if yes i put an asterisk on the question if your child is fine okay go ahead if your child decide to spend more time then your child decide to spend more time because your child probably the previous questions your child managed to save some time because your child was faster right you are faster at doing it so you try to spend more time on this question for example and then you have to keep checking time and manage time. You have to check time and manage time, right? Because you're not sure. You cannot be spending one hour on a question, right? And then you need to check each answer in each step. So as you do each step, check, okay? This is one of the cure or the, or, or the secret or the strategy to make sure your children do not make careless mistakes. And that is to check each answer in each step. That means every computation your child needs to check. And when your child carry forward from one step to another, your child needs to check and then after that your child need to confirm that the final answer is correct how does your child do that there are many ways the other uh, one of the very easy way is to work backwards that means once you get the final answer you put in the final answer into the question and see whether all figure uh, whether you can figure out all the answer right the question back and then once you're done with the particular question again you move on to the next question before you move on to the next question check time you need to check time again and manage time and also you need to 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 check again because you must remember at the end of the day it's not just about one problem sum it is about the whole paper right so it's a collection of questions that your child must do and then while your child is doing that your child must always check if any question is not done right because if any question is not done it's basically zero mark so your child need to revisit it Alright, so by using this problem sum, I'm, I go through with you the Dr. Zam case checklist so that it's clearer to you what is the Dr. Zam's GWS method, okay, given working solution with the Dr. Zam case checklist and the golden rules. Alright, so when you combine all of this, you will have a very powerful math, mental routine or habit, right, which means that your child can solve basically any math problem sum. Alright, so now let's take a look at the, uh, so basically just now that I mentioned to you, this is the math problem sum toolbox, right? Okay, with the math problem sum toolbox, your child can then proceed, you know, to understand what to do. Now, let's go to this question, okay? So I'm going to give you all some time to do it. So there will be about 10 minutes for you all to do it, okay? So let's figure out which are the givens. Okay, uh, so the, the timer is actually starting already, 10 minutes, alright? So the first thing we need to do is find out the givens, alright? So mother bought some packets of cookies. She gave some cookies to Pei Hui, okay? It's okay, let me give you more time, alright? So basically, let me just use the pen, uh, okay? So basically, mommy gave cookies to Pei Hui, Tevum and Ali, right? So this is the given. Okay, so at first, two fifth of the cookies were given to Ali. Okay, of the cookies were given to Ali. All right. So all these cookies, two fifth were given to Ali. So this is the given. The next given is Pei Hui had twenty five percent more than Teva. So this is the next given. Right. And then mother decided to give the remaining cookie she had bought 
So she gave the remaining cookies she had bought equally to each of them. Right, so 15 cookies each. So this is the given, the other given. And like I mentioned just now earlier on, you can then derive another given. And that is the remaining here is 3 times 15. Right? Okay. So for those who have just joined us, you actually have about 10 minutes to uh, do this. Okay. So later I'll give you some time to do it. Alright, I just want to make sure you all know what are the given. Okay, so let's continue. Now, the ratio of cookies of Pehue to Ali is 8 is to 9. So this is another given. Alright, now finally, okay, the finally, the last sentence is actually us the solution. Okay, so this is the solution that is asked of you in the problem, and that is. The solution is asking how many packets of cookies did mother buy if each packet had 20 cookies. So in the next uh, process okay, of using this method, your child will then pluck out all the givens and derive any givens that they can get which are useful from the givens that is in the question. Right? Your child will list them down so that your child does not miss out any givens. Then the next step is the S, the solution. Your child needs to be very clear about what solution your child is looking for, right? So that's the solution. And then what remains here will be the workings, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you all about, let's say, 10 minutes. Okay? About 10 minutes to actually uh, take a look at the question, right? So let me just uh, show you the 10 minutes here. Alright. So let me just give you about, let's say, 10 minutes. 5 to 10 minutes, okay, to do it on your own. So for those who are there, yeah, please do it on your own. Okay, so let me just see whether there are any questions on Facebook. Okay, for those who are joining us, I'm giving y'all some time to actually do this question. Alright, so I will join y'all later. Alright, so two minutes have passed. So you have about another eight more minutes. Okay, about eight more minutes.
Okay, now for those who have just joined us, you know, or probably you're watching this video being recorded, of course you can just pause and then take some time to do it. Right, take some time to do it and then uh, you can continue on with the video. But because it's live, I have to give you all some time to actually do it. Right? So that's why I actually put 10 okay. minutes. Now, for those who have just joined us, you know, or probably you're watching this video. Okay, so let's let me show you how we proceed from there. Okay, so 10 minutes up. So let's take a look at the solution. Okay, so using the GWS method with Dr. Zanki's checklist, this is what you need to do. Okay, so Dr. Zanki's checklist, so you can visualize to draw. So like for example, okay, I'm just giving an example of what I mean by just drawing to understand. You're not drawing a model, you're not drawing whatever part of the working. This is not working. This is just to help your child to visualize, draw, to understand. Like I mentioned to you, this is brain-based learning. Brain-based learning is, you know, you need to make something concrete. But in this case, your children cannot be bringing chocolate chip cookies or cookies to the examination hall, right? So your children need to at least make it pictorial, pictorial, right? So that the brain can understand the question better. So like, for example, in this case, what your child could do to understand this problem better is just to draw, you know, like for example, okay, you have the mother, okay, what did mother do? Okay, mother gave cookies to three kids, right? So Pei Hui, Ali, and Teva, for example, right? So what happened here is mommy had cookies, okay? Don't know how much cookies she bought. So some of it, she gave to three of them, and then she had some remaining, right? And then after that, okay, uh, the relationship between Ali to the cookies is given, right? And then... The relationship between Pei Hui and Tevam was also given and that is in terms of percentage. Right? And then there's the after and before. So at first, what did mommy do? Okay, mommy gave to all three of them some of the cookies. Right? Then second stage, what happens? Okay, mommy gave the rest equally to all of them. And because of that, what happens? Okay, something happened, right? Like for example, right now they're talking about the ratio changes and things like that. So when your child goes through this process of visualizing or to draw, but of course I would advise your child to draw something because not every child has the ability to visualize so clearly in the head, right? So if your child is not such a student, then get your child or get, the, get yourself to actually draw, right? When you draw, you are training your brain to understand, right? So it's very important in this stage. Right, and uh, this is not part of the working, of course. This is just to help you to understand because sometimes most of the problem with children solving problems some is not that they do not know how to add minus or whatever. They do not understand the question because your child needs to understand the mathematical language. So in order for your child to understand the mathematical language, your child needs to take some time. So when your child keep on practicing and use this method using this case checklist, and your child has a math mental routine or mental uh, habit, then it becomes easier. All right. So, then the next thing is, like I mentioned to you, right? Look out for the givens, look out for the solution, and write it down. So this is something that your child shouldn't be doing in the examination, but it's something that your child can write so that it's very clear to them what are the givens, right? So what are the givens here? Okay. So first, two fifth of cookies were given to the children. Two fifth of the cookies given to the children belongs to. Ali, right? So I stated here two fifth belongs to Ali. So if two fifth belong to Ali, alright, so if your child knows fraction really well, three fifth of the cookies will then belongs to Pehue and Tebam. So this is what is being known as derived givens. Right? Derived givens here means givens which your children can easily calculate. Okay, from the other given so this is like something which is pretty obvious but it's good for your child to write it down okay the reason why i'm giving this kind of uh, method is because i'm assuming that i need to help the worst or the weakest student and from there the students who are the highest achieving students they will then be able to do these steps faster or skip some of these steps but i do not want to lose any child doing math so that's why I want to make sure that every single step is very explicit and obvious. Okay? So that's the other given. 
The other given here, according to the question, is Pei Hui has 25% more than Tebum, right? So that's the other given. What's the other given here? Mommy gave more cookies, right? Mother gave more cookies. So at first she gave a certain amount of cookies, and after that, mother gave some more. In this, uh, in this case, mommy gave 15 each to the children, and these are equal, right? Equally, 15, 15, 15. All right? And then after she did this, what happens? Pay away to Ali now, the ratio is 8 is to 9. All right? So these are the givens. And the other given, which is actually found in the question itself, which is found in the solution, or rather the question at the end, is that each packet has 20 cookies. So you see, when your child wants to solve a problem, okay, when your child uses this method, your child needs to be very clear about all the given information, all the givens, and all the derived givens your children can get. All right, but of course, the uh, derived givens must not be givens which are derived just because your child can derive. It must be useful to them, right? To their understanding and to them solving the problem. All right. So according to the question, the solution that is uh, wanted or required of your child is to know how many packets of cookies. Packets, uh, not how many cookies, how many packets of cookies mother bought. Right? So, following this uh, Dr. Sankey's checklist, right? So, we have check time, manage time, we have read, we have annotated, analyzed, we have drawn to understand, we have visualized. Now, the next thing is to ask which concepts. Right? So, the concept here is fractions, percentage, ratio, and whole numbers. Why is it important for your child to know which concepts are tested? Right? You see, your child has many, 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 many concepts to remember. So when your child has a certain folder system in your head, right, in your child's head, and your child can uh, group concepts according to topics, and then under each topic, your child will know, oh, under this topic, I need to know this, 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 this. So once your child knows these concepts, okay, which are involved, suddenly your child's brain is activated to recall all the different concepts. So this is actually one of the very uh, great, accelerated learning strategies which is using your brain's ability to recall things when things are in order in a certain connection or certain way of uh, sequence right so these are the tested topics then next thing is you need to know which skills are involved so in this particular case the skills that need to be involved here are normally numerical calculation right numerical calculation i mean how your child add divide and things like that Okay, so which heuristics can your child use? Like for example, in this case, typically, okay, we would advise children to draw a model, right? So when your child draws a model, your child can understand better, right? And there are different kind of models. So when you continue on with future webinars, your child is going to learn more about the part whole approach, uh, the distributive model, the comparative models, and different kind of different models, okay, and all the different heuristics. So for this case, we just assume that you already know all the different heuristics. All right? Then the next thing is your child need to know which non-routine methods. Is there any particular non-routine method that is involved here? Right? So now let's get moving uh, with the working. So the workings here, so as you can see here, you know the givens, you know the solution that you are uh, that you want. The next thing is to create or to come up with the workings. So these workings that you come up with are based on your problem solving strategies. Right? So as you can see, when you have a very big problem like this, when the, the problem is very, uh, I would say, very elaborate, okay, there are many parts to it. Of course, one the problem solving strategy is to solve part of the problem first. Okay? So you solve parts of the problem. All right? Then in this case, if you notice, there's the word after, now, right? something happened, there's a process. Right? So mother gave something, then after that mother gave some more. So there's a before and after. Uh, problem solving strategies that your child have to use and then typically for this kind of question there's this other strategy which is called the before after change table right some will call it the before change after some will call it before after change table doesn't matter and then in this case we are using the units method units method means you convert things in the form of units either using it like to represent unit by using the letter u or you can break it down into a model, okay, unit modeling. So in this case, we are using units method and also unit modeling. Unit modeling here means you break down uh, the, the diagram or the model that you draw into units, right? So these are the different kind of problem solving strategies your child needs to pick up, right? 
So in Singapore math, everything is about problem solving. So your child needs to really learn all this. So that's why we have the toolbox, okay, the math problem sum toolbox, which includes all the problem solving strategies inside. And then we get your child to reinforce all the different problem solving strategies and then use a certain mental routine to know how to do it. Right, so this toolbox helps your child to, like for example, you know, if your child has a hammer, have a screwdriver, have uh, like for example a nail, and then you tell your child, okay, I want to hang a, I want to hang my photo, or photo frame. What would you do? I want to hang my, uh, you know, uh, art piece on the wall. You know, so your child first need to understand what tools are available, right? If your child chooses to use a drill, for example, then your child needs to have the wall plug, and then after that, your child needs to use a screw, a screwdriver. If your child decides to use a nail. To hang then your child will ask the question you know like for example is the photo frame heavy if the photo frame is heavy or if the art piece is heavy then of course you cannot just use a nail the nail will drop right so the toolbox is the same way when your child knows all the different problem solving strategies the different tools your child has then your child will then know oh these tools are to be used for what and then your child learns how to use these tools then your child is unstoppable at solving math problem sums Okay. All right. Now, let's take a look at the answer. All right. So first things first, like I mentioned to you, you must be having the givens and the working. So these are the workings, right? So at first, this component here is Ali, right? At first, this is Ali. Okay. Let me just uh take some time to do something here. Okay, let's go back to the question. Okay, so sorry about the technical difficulty. Okay, so at first, okay, so now we start doing the working. So at first, you draw five units, right, or five boxes. Okay, or you have a model, you break it up into five, right? So why five? Because of the fraction, right? Two fifth is Ali's. So the other three, of course, belongs to Pei Hui and Tevam okay uh, Pei Hui and Tevam so the next thing is Pei, Pei Hui and Tevam alright so according to the given Pei Hui has 125% therefore Tevam will have 100% because here it was mentioned that Pei Hui has 25% more so Tevam has 100% so Pei Hui has 25% more so Pei Hui will have 125% right so Tevam has 100% Right, so the ratio of Pehui to Tevam will be 5 is to 4. Right, why is it 5 is to 4? Because it's a very simple fraction. Okay, so for example, it's very easy to get this out. So it's 125 divided by 100. Right, so it is 5 over 4 because you divide by 25 each. 5 over 4. So the ratio of Pehui to Tevam is 5 is to 4. So that means this whole thing here is 9 units, right? So you convert them into units. So this is what is meant by unit method, right? So how do you know it's 9 units from the ratio? So this is 5 units, this is 4 units, okay? So since you know this is 9 units, right? So what it means here is this is 3 units each, right? Because this whole thing is 9, right? This whole thing is 9 units. So 9 divided by 3 equal units. One of it is 3 units each. Alright? That means Ali has 3 units also. And 3 units, right? So total you have 15 
units. So this is what is being meant by units method. You do your workings in terms of units and then you use unit modeling. You break it down. Right? So this is what happens. But that's not the end. This is called solving part of the problem. To solve part of the problem is to come up with all the units first. So this is at first, right? So at first, you need to find out what's pathway to Ali's ratio. Okay, because later on the information given is pathway to Ali after. Right, after mother has given 15 cookies each. Right, so to get this value very simple, you just pluck out, right? So pay away already five. So Ali, these six come from these six units, right? So pay away is five units, Ali is six units. So the ratio is five is to six. Okay, so this is the process of before and after, right? Before and after, so it's a process. So after what happens, mother gave 15 cookies to each child. And then what is given there? The ratio now is 8 is to 9. So this is after, right? So this is the ratio after. This is the ratio at first, right? So this is the ratio at first. This is the ratio after. Okay? So this is after. So there is another problem sum strategy, okay? Which we call the before after change table or before change after table. Doesn't matter. So normally they will just do a table like this, right? Very simple table. So Pehue Ali, right? So Pehue first is five, right? Five. Ali is six. Then after that, because of something that my mother did, which in this case 15 cookies, mother gave to each of them, it now become eight and nine. Right? So in this case, if your child needs to be clearer, your child can put the U here. So that means in this case it is U or ratio, right? So so it's 5 unit, 6 unit, 8 unit, 9 unit, 3 unit, and 3 units, right? So the change is 3 units. So all your child needs to do is ask itself what is the difference. So the difference here, the change is 3 units, 3 units, right? So this change in 3 unit is actually referring to the 15 cookies, right? So they change by 3 unit because of 15 cookies. So this is a relationship that is very important. Right, so this units method, every time you have a units method, it's very important for you to create the relationship between units and the value of the cookies, the amount of cookies that you want for this question, right? So this is the definitive statement, which is very important, the relationship, okay? Three units equal to 15 cookies. So therefore, one unit is five cookies. So now you can know the answer already, right? So normally once your student or your child or you get to this stage and then you know what's one unit normally you can solve the answer already you can get the answer already right so in this case one unit is five cookies so at first 15 cookies right at first is 15 cookies so just take 15 times 5 because one unit is 5 75 right so this 75 is at first then later on mother gave some more cookies so what's the total number of cookies you just uh, at this right so after mother gave 15 cookies to each children so total cookies is 3 times 15 plus 75 so 120 but you must remember the question did not ask for how many cookies the questions asked for how many packets of cookies so we know each packet has 20 cookies right so each packet have 20 cookies so you just take 120 cookies divided by 20 and you get the answer 6 packets of cookies Right? So as you can see here, of course, this is like the most difficult PSLE math question. All right? uh, what I'm trying to tell you here is, anyone can solve this question by using the GWS method with Dr. Zamki's checklist. All right? That's my point to you. And at the same time, if your child uses a math problem, some toolbox, of course, your child can have lots of strategies your child can use. And then when your child keep on doing more and more, your child will see a pattern. Right? Your child will see a certain strategy each time when your child faces a certain kind of problem sum your child will know what strategy to use right so i'm not a believer of children having to memorize answers to specific questions i'm a believer that your child needs to equip itself with heuristics with problem solving tools and then figure out a very systematic way of using this tool to help them all right so this is the end of today's Facebook live event which is Tuesday try it so tomorrow is Wednesday webinar so we're gonna share with you some uh, webinar which normally we will record the webinar uh, it's not available through 
Facebook live so we're gonna stream it live so you can actually learn something through the webinar alright so for those who want uh, the worksheet okay you can sign up for our newsletter so every time when we release questions we will actually send the worksheet in PDF form to all our newsletter subscribers and then the workings are also given to your children so you can actually print it out get your child to do right so because at the end of the day you want your children to be able to sit down and do a certain 